Now here's something unusual. Well, I thought it was anyway. This is the Magic Message Audio Visual Repeater. Repeater, 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 repeater. Now the suggestion for this video came from a viewer. He'd found one of these things used. He was offering to send it over. He thought I might find it interesting. I wasn't too sure what it was. So I went online, did a bit of a search and found this one, brand new in box. I thought it's better to get this one. Might have documentation here that we need to learn more about it. And also I didn't have to put him to the trouble of sending his over. But we'll just have a look around this. It comes from a company, Research Electronics Incorporated. I suspect it's from the 80s or 90s perhaps. It's a cassette based system as you can see from the image here. These are some of the accessories you could get for it. We'll look at those more in a moment. And um, can you guess from looking at the picture on the front here, exactly what this thing was for. All the evidence is there to explain where this was used. We've got the message playing cassette base system here with stop and play buttons on. Now to activate that, we've got a remote control on the end of this cable here. And notice that says touch here for message. Now the fact it actually says that indicates that the idea is that somebody who is unfamiliar with this would walk up to it and press that button. Additionally, you can see we've got suction cups on this. And those suction cups are facing towards us, as in you would stick this behind a piece of glass and we'd be looking through that glass to this button. And then if we go down here to the power supply, well, you can see it's a 12 volt car power adapter thing. So you're plugging it in a car. This is going on the inside of a window and you touch here to hear a message. So this is a thing for car dealerships. This would go inside a car in a dealership. No doubt you press the button, and it would start saying something like, oh, you're looking at the new 1989 Trans Am. This will go from 0 to 60 in whatever seconds. You know, that kind of thing. At least I think that's the idea. Let's get it out of the box and have a good look at it. Hopefully it works. Now that usage reminds me a little bit of what happened to the VHD system in the UK. Do you remember the video disc that uh, the UK backed, but it only ended up coming out in Japan? in the UK did end up becoming a commercial product and it was used in car dealerships to play back videos. I'm sure you could put this thing to other uses other than trying to sell cars to people. Um, but it seems like that was the intention anyway. So the connector at this end is some variety of DIN plug. This thing, it weighs a lot. Now, if that's going to be suctioned onto a window, that's a lot of weight to hold on to these four suction cups. But as you can see, they do face that way. So it will be on the inside of a window. This thing that looks like a button is not a button. It's uh, solid. But what that will do, it will sense the vibrations coming through the glass. So doing that, we'll start this thing off. Now, does this thing have a speaker built into it to then vibrate the glass back to play back the audio? I suspect so, but uh, we'll find out in a minute. Let's just have a look at this thing, because if this just had a speaker on it, well, that'll be no use if this is inside the vehicle buried away behind the glass. And uh, it's like an unusual looking walk with that, isn't it? We've got a lot going on in here. In the bottom there, it says endless loop cassettes only. So of course this is playing a message and once it gets to the end of the message, it just plays it again. Therefore, you don't need anything on this spindle here to rewind the tape because the tape never goes back in that direction. It just moves this way. Down in the bottom here, I can see a mono head, which of course is all you need. And uh, does this thing have any kind of speaker in it whatsoever? No, it doesn't. So it must be outputting the sound through that. Right, let's get the tape out of here. I'm glad there is a tape in it. Right, stopper, it says there. So that's just holding the cassette. Never attempt to insert cassette this side up, turn over before using, made in Korea. Okay, let's have a look at this manual and hopefully I'll learn a little bit more. Ah, there we go, I've got a date on it now. 86. Now the usage I suggested at the beginning of putting it inside a car to pass on information is just one idea for that. And this is suggested in here, in the registration card, it mentions where will you use this unit primarily. So it doesn't have to be just there. The other reason I mention it with this particular one is we've got the 12 volt power adapter. However, on the back of the box, you can see you can get separate AC adapters for this thing. So that would enable you to use it in other locations. But as this one stands, I've got to think that that is the use that it was intended for. But we'll have a look inside the manual to see if there's any other suggestions in here. 
Yeah, here we go. Magic message has been designed for use in the retail sales market. Point of purchase displays, after hours messages, unattended displays and information centers in museums, parks, conventions, and trade shows. Magic message assists the salesman by informing and entertaining the customer and by answering many questions before they are asked. This cassette, as you can see there, is 45 seconds in length. Now, once you've recorded your announcement on this and it plays it back, the system needs to know when to stop the tape ready for the next customer. And it mentions here that it uses a unique endless loop system because rather than ones that use foil or other tones or whatever, this one uses an auto level sensor. So what it's doing is it's listing out for the silence after the message. When it hits that, it will stop the tape so that when the next person comes along and touches this thing on the window, they're gonna hear the message from the beginning. Now. I actually think I might put this to some use all these years after it was first developed because often I'll leave notes on the front door for parcel delivery people. When I just pop out for a few minutes, I'll say, please leave the parcel on the step or around the back or in a bin or with a neighbor or whatever. With this, I could have an announcement recorded on that tape and the parcel person could come up to the window, which is next to the front door. It's right next to it. They'd see it and they'd tap that. Hopefully they'd notice this. I'd doubt it to be honest but hopefully they'd tap that and it would say what to do with the parcel so it could actually be a functional device for me this rather than just a, a novelty show in a video that's if it works of course so let's find out hope it doesn't need new belts anyway we've got the power lead in there i will show you what i'm plugging that into in a moment and we've got our alien face hugger attached to it but we'll see if this thing actually spins once i put power into it so let me get my power supply Okay, now I could have swapped that out for a normal DC power adapter, but I'm just going to use all the original equipment. I'm plugging it into this Jackery power supply. So that can go into there. That's turned on the power to it now. So let's see if this thing actually works. Let's have a look. Run. Oh, ha ha. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, plenty of torque in there. If I just tap this here, you'll see the light comes on. There we go. Now on the machine itself, there are a couple of obvious controls, stop and run. And then we've got the volume slider here. And that will of course affect the output level, which comes out via the transducer over there. But there is another adjustment that can be made. There's a pot here that you could turn with a screwdriver. And the purpose of this, well, it affects the delay before the device stops playing the tape. And the reason for that is, well, imagine you've got this tape here, and this is a 45 second tape, and you've recorded yourself a 15 second announcement. Well, after that has finished playing on this, it will listen for the silence for a few seconds and then stop the tape. So that might mean you've got a 20 odd second silence before that announcement comes back round again. So if somebody goes up to your vehicle or whatever and taps this thing here, this starts playing, they'd have to wait 20 odd seconds before they heard the announcement on the tape. And that's not suitable because as soon as somebody taps something, it doesn't work, they're gonna walk off. So that is what this is for. This affects the amount of time that this thing keeps spinning after you get into silence. And the idea is you'd adjust it just carefully so that it gets up to the point just before the announcement. So for example, with our 15 second one, you play your 15 second announcement, the thing carries on going for another 20 seconds or so. And then the next time somebody comes along and taps this thing, within a couple of seconds, we're back into the announcement again. Right, so it all seems to be working. Let's record something onto this tape. Now, of course, this device was designed to be used by people who don't necessarily record tapes as a regular thing. So in the instructions here, there's a recording technique section to give them some hints and tips, such as the recording level they're supposed to set. And it does mention here that the endless loop tape that's included is completely blank. And yes, it is. I've checked just in case anyone was wondering. And then it goes on about uh, writing a script recording your program, timing it so it's about 15 seconds shorter than the tape length. Okay, I'm going to record the cassette on this machine here. I'll start off though by putting it into record pause because I just want to check the recording level will be suitable and that looks about right to me. 
Now I've got to fill in 30 seconds, hence the stopwatch here, and I think I'll fill that time by reading a couple of things out of the instructions here. Because you know earlier on I mentioned how this would have been used perhaps in a car showroom. Well, there's a couple of things in here that seem to back that up. So let's just start this off and I'll start talking. Yeah, so there's a couple of sections here. The first one on the cassette unit, it says... The OK, so not exactly 30 seconds, but it's pretty close. So let's stick it into run and see if we can hear this at all. It says the Magic Message cassette unit is specifically designed to be unobstructive and in particular fit under the seat of most cars. Yeah, so my microphone work on that wasn't particularly good, but it seems like I've got the message length about right because this thing stops at pretty much the right point. Let's go and stick it on a window and have a listen. All right, so I've installed it. Let's give it a go. OK, let's give it a go. Yeah, don't think it likes double glazing. OK, now there is a sensitivity control on the back of the transducer, but I've turned it all the way up to its most sensitive and yet it still won't respond to a bang on the window, just down to the fact it's on this double glazing. So my original plans to have this as a message to be played back to, say, a parcel delivery person, those have been foiled. But let me just pop inside, I'll tap the back of it so that you can hear what the message sounds like. And then on the transducer side here, it mentions that the transducer has been designed primarily to be installed on a glass surface, such as a car window or storefront window or door. Okay, I think I'll try this somewhere else. There are countless reasons why the magic message didn't go on to become commonplace, and we ended up living in a world where every shop window shouted out special offers at the tap of a finger. In fact, one of the system shortcomings is hinted at in their own instructions. They recommend that you make up a sign to draw your customer's attention to the presence of the message. Now, that's a big issue. You see, nobody expects windows to talk, so they don't, as a matter of course, go around knocking on them to receive information. As a result, you have to make up a sign for people to notice this thing, so it seems like you might as well have just printed your message up on that sign in the first place. I must say that I was really pleased to find that this thing was fully operational, despite the fact that it's been sitting in this box since it was made, and that might have been in the late 1980s. I've got to think that these South Koreans really might have a future in electronics manufacture. But this thing, to me, in a way, feels like an ancestor to the QR code. I mean, it's something that you see in the real world that doesn't do anything until you interact with it, and then when you do, you get served pre-prepared information that's more often than not relating to the things it's been stuck on. But I've just got one question. It's the audio-visual repeater. Did anyone spot the visual aspect to this? Was it the fact that it exists in 3D space and you need to find this to be able to operate it? I really don't know. Answers on a postcard. OK, I'm interrupting myself. I think I've figured it out. No need to get those postcards out. On the side here, there's a socket, and that socket is for this accessory that's listed on the back, the remote relay module. And that can switch on up to 750 watts of lighting during presentation. So I suppose that's your visual part. It turns on some lights to light up whatever it is you're talking about. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at the magic message machine today. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.